In the case of example four, notice in the directions it says we want to find all of our real zeros. So even though we have a total of three zeros that we could have, we need to find just our real zero. So the only thing we can't, we don't list is our unreal, also known as imaginary. Kind of like a lot of some of your friends. So if we want to solve our polynomial equation here, what we can do is we can start with a, we got a little three. Um, we could do our negative two, sorry, our, um, our P over Q. So let's actually do that here. Ah, who am I kidding? You really don't want to do P over Q. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and graph this on your um, calculator. So we're going to need to type this function in to your calculator. So after we type this into your calculator, uh, you get your negative. Make sure you use a negative, not a minus sign here. Get all these numbers in here, and then we can finally hit our graph button. When we go to our picture, uh, looks like we might have a possible zero here at negative one. Looks like we'd have something here in between one and two, and then maybe something here at two. So probably the best thing to do is to double check and make sure that one of these is an actual zero. So how do you find this? Well, we go to second calculate. We're gonna find a zero. <clears throat> and we're going to do our left bound, right bound. So I'm gonna choose between negative two and zero on the left side. And, oh, hey, it's not actually one. So we really can't use that. So what we're gonna do on, maybe on the right side, maybe we have a zero here. So maybe that's a ni little bit nicer. Um, remember, some of these you can find with your P over Q, if we would have done that. So let's go to second, calculate, uh, I want to find a zero, and I want to find something between one and three. Enter. Ah, this is a perfect two. So even though this looks like it's going through one, it's not going through exactly one. So you have to be very careful when you are choosing your right points. So what we need to do is, yeah, you can go through your calculator and you can find all your zeros this way, but we need to show the algebra behind it. So let's use two as our number we put into the box. And we're gonna say negative 10, 15, 16, and negative 12. So we should get a remainder of zero, that's correct. So you bring down the negative 10, you get negative 20, here's a negative five, negative 10 when you multiply that by two, you get a six and then you get a 12 right here. So you get a zero. <clears throat> Booyah! So that means that one of our zeros is actually two. Now if we want to find out what our others are, well you have a negative 10 x squared, x squared minus five x plus six is equal to zero. And you could you know divide everything by one to see if you have any factors of 60 to add up to a negative five, which I don't believe we do. So since you can't do it that way, then we're gonna have to do the quadratic formula. So your quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over, I just can't forget the negative, two a. So we will plug these into our calculator here. Or not into our calculator. <laughs> Who's kidding? All right, so we're going to have a negative B. So your B is a negative 5. So you have a negative, negative 5, plus or minus square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times A, which is a negative 10, times a positive 6 all over 2 times negative 10. So if we clean this up a little bit, this will give us a positive 5 out here, plus or minus. And you're going to have a 25 plus 240, right? 25 plus 240 is a 265 all over negative 20. 
So the good news is you don't have to simplify any of this. All you have to do is just type it into your calculator. So make sure when you type it into your calculator that you are careful. Um, if we type a five plus, you're gonna have to type it in twice. So you're gonna do, there's no plus or minus button. So we'll say five plus square root of 625 divided by negative 20. So go to your calculator. Now if we just type in five plus the square root of 265 and then divided by a negative 20, this is give us, Oh, wow, that's not even right. Let me go back here. Um, I forgot to cursor outside of my uh, radical. So let's delete this. Delete, delete. Go back here, delete. So we go here and cursor outside. Then we divide by negative 20. This will not give you the correct answer. However, if you put the top in parentheses, five plus the square root of 265, cursor outside of it, in parentheses, then divide by a negative 20. This will give you the correct answer. Um, and the top part, your calculator is just taking the square root of 265 and dividing that by negative 20. In the second row, it's actually taking the five plus the square root of 265 divided by negative 20. So make sure you are careful when you are plugging your values in. And I noticed this is an A1.06. So that is actually one of the zeros that we had when I first found the zero on our graph. So one of our answers is negative 1.06. And then if you type in a five minus the square root of six, uh, 265 all divided by negative 20, you should get your other answer. And your other answer is gonna end up being a 0 0.56. So be careful with your calculator. And yes, it does give you a lot of nice answers, but you also need to know how to use it correctly. So here would be your zeros, for example, four.